Okay, in this video, I'm going to do one more example using the method of Frobenius to solve power series, or excuse me, to solve differential equations. This is going to be a slightly more different, difficult example, and I'm actually going to use a lot more shifting of indices just to show you that it can be done any way you like. So the first thing we need to do is to show that the power, or the excuse me, the method applies. So we need to put the differential equation in the form of y of x times or y y double prime of x, excuse me, plus p of x, y prime of x, plus q of x, y of x is equal to zero. If we do that, we'll find that p of x, uh, p of x becomes 2 over x, and q of x is equal to 1. Alright? That's just dividing basically by x everywhere. And then if you multiply by x times p of x, we're going to get that that's equal to 2, and x squared q of x becomes x squared. And remember, the method of Frobenius applies where you have singularities. So this would imply that we have a singularity here. So that means the method of Frobenius works. Remember, a singularity is a divide by zero situation. Alright, so the first thing we need to do is define our power series, or define y. And because we're using the method of Frobenius, I'm going to define my y as n is equal to 0 to infinity of a sub n x to the n plus r. That is the power series required for Frobenius methods. So the next thing we need to do, if we look at our power series, is multiply this value of y by x. And if we do that, this here just becomes n plus r plus 1. Alright, that's something you should be very familiar with at this stage. The next thing we need to remember is that when solving differential equations using power series, all that matters is that all of your power series begin at the same point and have the same power of your x value. And it doesn't matter where they begin or what power it is, as long as they're all the same. So just for convenience, I'm going to decide that everything is going to begin at x to the n plus r. Alright, so let's do that. I'm just going to shift this down. Remember, if you go upwards here, you go downwards here. And if you go downwards here, you go upwards here. They're opposites. Alright, so as a result of that, we're going to get that it's the sum of n is equal to 1 to infinity of a sub n minus 1 x to the n plus r. And this is an equivalent expression for this. Alright? And what I'm going to say from now on is that when I differentiate this and this, I'm going to put them all in terms of n is equal to 1 to infinity and x to the n plus r. So the next thing we need to do is differentiate this power series. So we're going to find that y prime is equal to the sum from n is equal to 0 to infinity. Remember, when you're differentiating, this would say expression here does not change. And it's going to get a sub n. Um, n plus r, x to the n plus r minus 1. Looking at our power series, or excuse me, our differential equation, we see we multiply only by 2. So that is, is multiplying by a function. So immediately I'm just going to shift this to, to get this here. Alright? So the first thing we need to do, of course, is to pad out the power series to begin seeing, uh, to, to begin seeing a pattern. So if I pad it out by putting in the first term, which is n is equal to 0, you're going to find that a0 times r x to the r minus 1 plus the sum from n is equal to 1 to infinity of a n n plus r x to the n plus r minus 1. Remember that this is the zeroth term, therefore from now on we're starting at n is equal to 1. All right? So, remember, of course, we're trying to get x to the n plus r. So, immediately we need to shift this. Alright, so let remember, if you go upwards here, you go downwards here, and vice versa. Alright, so that becomes, I'm just going to write it here for the moment, n is equal, that's going up, this is going down to infinity, a n plus 1, uh, a n plus 1, n plus r plus 1, x to the n plus r. And these, this here is the same as this. All right, so I'm just going to get, I'm going to put it straight in. Just bear with me now one moment. N is equal to zero to infinity of a n plus one, n plus r plus one, x to the n plus r. All right, that means we no longer need this expression. Now we need to look at our what we're trying to get again. We're trying to get it starting at x to the n, or excuse me, it's power to the x to the n plus r, which is what we have. However, it's not starting at the same point. So what we need to do is pad out this power series. 
All right, so we're going to get a0 times r x to the r minus 1 from here, plus the first term in this power series. So the first term is going to be plugging in n is equal to 0. So you're going to get a1 times r plus 1 times x to the r, plus what's left in the power series. Of course, this time we're starting at 1, and we have an plus 1, n plus r plus 1, x to the n plus r. All right, and that now, just bear with me and I get rid of this. That is an equivalent expression to this. All right, and notice we're starting here at the same point as our x, y term, and we have the same power in our, in our power series. So that is, that's good. That's very good. All right, and like I said, you can shift upwards, downwards. You can shift to wherever you like, provided you go to the same spot. So what will I do with this? Bear with me, I'm just going to write this in here. Alright, just like that. Now the next thing we need to do, of course, is look at our second derivative, our y double prime term. Alright, so let's just do that. And our y double prime term is going to be equal to the sum from n is equal to 0 to infinity of a n times n plus r times n plus r minus 1 times x to the n plus r negative 2. Like that. Alright. So, what do we need to do here? Well, we need to, uh, first of all, multiply by x. So, let's go ahead and do that. So, multiply, pre-multiply by x. So, there's an x here, x to the 1. So, x times this times x times 1. And this basically becomes just negative 1. Like so. Alright. Once again, we need to shift it because we want x to the n plus r. So, how do we go about doing that? First thing we need to do is pad out the series. So we need to put in the n is equal to 0 term. And we're going to get the following. We're going to get a0 times r times r minus 1 times x to the r minus 1. That's the first term. And we need to pad out. We not, don't pad out the rest. We put in the rest. So it's a n, n plus r, n plus r minus 1, x to the n plus r minus 1. All right, we're getting close now. Because this here can be shifted, uh, this here can be shifted upwards to give us x to the n plus r. So let's go ahead and do that. I know we're looking kind of messy, but we're, we're just shifting this one here. So that becomes the sum from n is equal to zero to infinity. Now this is going upwards, so it's a n plus one, n plus r plus one, n plus r, x to the n plus r. That's an equivalent term to this. So, for that reason, I'm going to write it straight in. Okay, just give me one moment there now. And this is, I hope you can see anyway, looking similar to what we had with the y prime term. So what we need to do now is make sure that the power series starts at the same point, which is n is equal to 1. All right, so in actual fact, I'm going to get rid of this, this red term because that's just, that's just making the whole thing look a bit messy. So the same thing is we pad out this by one term, and then we start the rest of the series at n is equal to 1. All right, so I'm just going to write the answer straight out. Just bear with me now. a0, r, r minus 1, x to the r minus 1. And we have to add to that a1, r plus 1, r, x to the r, and then we add the rest, which is this whole thing actually starting at 1 this time. So a n plus 1, n plus r plus 1, n plus r times x to the n plus r. Wow, I just about fit that in. All right. Now, I know you might be saying, holy, holy God, like that's looking, that's looking really mad, but the truth is, that was actually pretty straightforward. We applied the same method each time. So now if you look at it, we have our three terms, all of them starting at n is equal to 1, all of them having the same power, namely x to the n plus r, 
and each of them, ha well, two of them, excuse me, having these these constants at the beginning are the first terms in their series. So what we need to do is plug them into our differential equation. How do we plug them into our differential equation? Well, we can literally write them all straight in like this. Now, of course, you'll know then we'll have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We'll have 7 terms, which is very hard to write. So the best way, I suggest anyway, is to say that, that your differential equation, the, the DE, the differential equation becomes 1 plus 2, whereby 1 is your, uh, 1 becomes your, what's it, recurrence relation, and 2 is your indicial equation. Okay? Remember, of course, your indicial equation is all the, the, uh, the terms in the equation and not your series themselves, and then your series themselves become your, your recurrence relation. So let's just do this. Alright, so I'm going to get equation 1, which is my is for my recurrence relation. So it's going to be the following. It's going to be the sum from n is equal to 1 to infinity of x to the n plus r, because that's common. That's common for all three terms. Then it's going to be a, it's going to be, we need first of all x times y double prime, which is here, and the terms for that are as follows here. So it's going to be, no, it's not that there, it's going to be here. It's going to be an plus 1, n plus r plus 1, n plus r, plus twice y prime, so it's twice an plus 1, n plus r plus 1, plus x times y prime, which is just basically plus an minus 1, equals 0. And secondly, we get the terms for our Indicial equation. So let's do that. The terms for our initial equation x, y prime. So here we have a0. And this is going to be difficult. In actual fact, I'm going to write it in blue. So we have a0 times r times r minus 1, x to the r minus 1, plus a1 times r plus 1 times r times x to the r, plus twice y prime. So twice these two terms here. So twice a0 r x to the r minus 1 plus twice a1 times r plus 1 x to the r. Alright, and finally we need to add this term which is just a n minus 1. That's going to be equal to 0 as well. Alright, wow, that, I know that looks painful, but you definitely when you're doing it in your own sheet of paper it's not too bad. And I'm going to pause there for the moment, okay? And I'll continue the rest in part two. So thanks for watching. Please pass it to your friends and subscribe to my channel.